Living in an age when the literary memoir is a ubiquitous presence, personal information, from the intimate to the mundane, is shared online with alacrity, and previous baseline assumptions of privacy seem increasingly irrelevant, we can easily overlook the widely varying extents to which composers' personalities and personal experiences directly affect their music. In fact, the idea of art as a platform for prevailingly subjective, confessional expression is, within the broad scope of history, relatively recent. For example, the connection between Mahler's turbulent personality and his highly dramatic music is obvious, and yet we can view Beethoven's art in a similar vein and miss the essential fact that his work was only made possible by an extraordinary level of intellectual discipline that was largely absent from his personal life. The relationship between Sibelius' personality and his music was similarly complicated. The enduring image of the composer casts him as a severe, bald-domed, granite-jawed embodiment of Finnish strength and independence, a musical patriot whose art galvanized the nation in its struggles against the Russian Tsar, the Soviets, and finally, the Nazis. In fact, this heroic portrait bears little relationship to the realities of his day-to-day -day existence. Sibelius was a hedonist who overspent wildly, indulged himself sexually, and dressed like a dandy. Stories of his alcohol-fueled exploits remain a part of musicians' lore. One tale describes a drinking game favored by Sibelius and his Helsinki circle of friends in which they'd spend the night carousing at the mansion of a patron, drinking themselves into near oblivion, and then hiding in various places around the house, competing to be the last person found by the housekeeping staff the following day. Moreover, Sibelius' personality was ill-suited to the role of the all-knowing, impenetrable Scandinavian sage. Plagued by insecurity and self-doubt, his ruthless self-criticism resulted in constant revisions of his work and eventually complete creative paralysis during the final three decades of his nearly 92-year life. His personal diaries are filled with expressions of fear and apprehension about his work, as in this passage from July of 1910, when he was already an internationally established composer. I am strangely lonely. You, ego, you do have some skills at this stage. About time. Try to work away this feeling of insecurity. You should have shoulders to carry your little musical cross. Pull yourself together. Sibelius completed the original version of En Saga, the first of his 16 tone poems, in 1892, around the time of his 27th birthday. He revised the work ten years later, shortening it by 150 bars. Although its title indicates that the piece is based on a specific story or tale, the composer would later claim otherwise. And Saga is an expression of a state of mind. I had undergone a number of painful experiences at the time, and in no other work have I revealed myself so completely. It is for this reason that I find all literary explanations unreasonable. The precise nature of these painful experiences remains unknown. Nonetheless, the extent to which Sibelius found his voice as an orchestral composer in this, his first published symphonic work, is extraordinary. All the elements that define and create the distinctive sound of his orchestral music are here in abundance. The open stratified textures, in which concordant elements are strictly held at a distance, related yet unmixed. The bustling, relentless motor figures that evoke the inexhaustibility of the life force. The tiny musical cells that gradually evolve into mighty tapestries. The wonderfully long, desolate, seemingly immovable pedal points the sheer life-affirming ecstasy of sonic resonance. This is the work of a Finnish impressionist who saw music's essential abstraction as its ultimate source of power. Sibelius' most compelling music implicitly rejects the quest for meaning that has animated so much of Western art over the last 150 years. The perspective his work expresses was certainly conditioned by the natural surroundings in which he lived, an environment in which nature appears at once bleak, unforgiving, and dynamic, its violently indifferent abundance forming a chaotically harmonious whole. The experience of hearing Sibelius' orchestral music can bring to mind notions of a mysterious, profoundly beautiful Darwinian ballet, and yet his work is not primarily an achievement of musical description. 
Sibelius wasn't driven to endure the torments of his compositional process by a desire to merely portray his private experiences in sound. Rather, his intense self-criticism was motivated by an urge to transcend the immediacy of the personal and reach the realm of what he called the profound logic that creates an interconnection between all the motives. Sibelius' art rests on his understanding of the individual, collective, and relational potential of musical objects and his special ability to arrange them in ways that invoke the stark realities of nature and the sportive energy he perceived in the natural world. Writing music that embodied these forces was his life's work and his great accomplishment. Thank you.